Sometimes it's confusing to know what rod you need for what type of fishing. So in this video, I'm gonna explain the different lengths, test curves, and which rod you should buy for the type of fishing that you do. Yes, fish on, fish on. So why do different types of rod exist? We've got to look at what a rod does for you. First of all, a rod has to take your bait and propel it out into the lake when you cast. So there's different lengths and strengths of rod available to enable you to cast short or long ranges at increasing accuracy. The next thing is that your rod needs to bend and absorb the lunges of a fish when it's hooked. If you didn't use a rod and you just dragged it in by hand, the fish would shake its head, get a little bit of slack line and fall off. So the right rod will bend a nice amount when you're reeling in your target fish. And finally, some rods are also used for bite indication. So spotting the rod tip tapping when a fish takes the bait, that's particularly important for feeder and lure rods, but we'll get to that later. When you go to buy a rod, they will normally be broken up into categories. The three categories are length, test curve, and casting weight. Now these three things will help you learn about the rod and understand whether or not it's the one for you. First of all, length, that's very obvious. How long is this rod? Test curve, this is how much weight is needed to bend the rod round to 90 degrees. A stiff rod will have a higher test curve than a soft bendy rod, which will have a lighter one. Normally test curve is measured in pounds and ounces here in the UK and it will be written on the underneath or side of the rod. Finally, more often used with match fishing gear and lure fishing rods is casting weight. Casting weight is just the rod manufacturers advising you how heavy the weight is that you should be using when you're casting it out. If you use the wrong weight to the wrong casting weight rod, it will either feel very difficult to cast or you won't be able to get the bend to then flick the bait out a nice distance. When people are first getting into fishing, in the UK at least, they're often float fishing. I think it's only right that we start with float rods. This here is a 12 foot float rod, probably the most commonly sold rod in tackle shops around the country. Float fishing is where loads of people start their angling journeys. And for me, I'm no different. A float rod was what came with me on my very first fishing sessions. However, I made the mistake of going straight in with a 12 foot model. A 12 foot float rod is great. You can cast a really good distance, play big fish and fish in deep water. However, looking back to any beginner angler getting into float fishing, I would definitely advise choosing a 10 or 11 foot float rod instead of a 12 foot variety. This is because at 12 feet long, it's a lot less manageable. You get caught in the trees more often. It's a bit heavier. It's less accurate to cast and it's all round just harder to use than a shorter float rod. What you'll notice when you're buying float rods is that they're often branded as pellet waggler uh, rods or just waggler rods. Personally, I don't see a huge difference between these two, but if it says pellet waggler on it, it's probably gonna be a slightly stiffer, pokier rod, leaning towards using it for carp or tench or bream potentially. Whereas a standard waggler rod is maybe a little lighter, more delicate and better suited to silverfish. As well as the 10, 11 and 12 foot float rods, there is a more specialist type of rod available like this which is a 13 foot type of float rod. This is a very long rod and as it gets longer, they get considerably more expensive. I certainly wouldn't be advising a 13 foot float rod to a beginner. However, if you've been float fishing for a long time and you wanna get onto a very big lake or you wanna fish a large river and have perfect float control, a 13 foot waggler rod can be the absolute perfect tool for the job. Final notes on float rods are that they tend to have quite small eyes, which can be a little bit delicate, so you've got to look after them. They're made out of quite high quality carbon to make them very light in the hand, and they have a very soft tip that bends slowly round into the butt. The reason for this is because when you're casting a float, it needs to have that flex in the tip to flick it out because you haven't got heavy weight like a feeder or a, or a lead. 
as you develop in your fishing and you decide maybe you want to fish further out or target larger fish, you might discover feeder fishing. This is where you have a cage on your line that you squeeze with full of ground bait and cast that out to attract the fish to your hook bait. Now feeder fishing kind of requires a slightly different type of rod to float fishing. It needs to be a little bit stronger in the butt section to give you that strength to cast a heavy feeder, but then you need the tip to be very soft and sensitive so that you can spot bites. I've got a range of feeder rods just up here, starting with, bear with me, oh, there it is. This is a 10 foot feeder rod with a casting weight of 40 grams. So it's perfect for your smaller method feeders, little maggot feeders and stuff. You can also fish just a straight lead, ledgering uh, with, with a feeder rod, but you will probably prefer to use a smaller weight than you would if you were carp fishing. The main difference with these rods is that on the end, they've got this light colored tip, which is very visible and very sensitive. So when you get bites, that's what you're watching to see whether or not you have a fish. Oh, oh, oh you're in, you're in, you're in. Oh, 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 I just changed the camera. Oh, no, you're in. Am I? Yes, oh. you're in, cow, cow, get it. You'll notice on feeder rods, the eyes are slightly larger than on float rods. This is because they're designed for use with slightly thicker lines. When you're feeder fishing, you often use a slightly thicker, stronger main line to deal with the persistent, regular casting of heavier weights. Feeder rods, of course, just like float rods, they come in a selection of lengths and strengths. What I have personally is some slightly shorter ones for fishing on little streams, small commercial lakes like day ticket lakes where you don't have to cast very far. But if you need to step it up and start casting a long distance, you might look for a power feeder rod. This N-gauge 12 foot power feeder is what I will take to the river when I'm going for barbel, big chub. It's got a casting weight of one all the way up to 80 grams and the line rating of between four and 10 pounds. However, this is a very tough rod. I've used this with 12 pound line fishing for quite large carp and it's done perfectly for that too. The stronger, stiffer rod will enable you to fish with bigger, heavier weights and of course, cast at longer distances. You might notice when you're buying a feeder rod that it could come with a range of different tips. Maybe it's got a half ounce tip, a one ounce tip and a two or even three ounce tip. These are like interchangeable sections that you can switch between based on how sensitive you need the rod to be to spot the bites. So if I'm fishing for barbel, I'll fish with a two or three ounce tip because they're not exactly shy biters. However, if I'm taking that same rod and I'm fishing for chub in the winter where they're only just gently plucking at the bait, I need to spot those bites. I need to see the bite before the fish feels the resistance. So I'll scale right back to a three quarter ounce tip or potentially half ounce. If you want to specifically target really big carp, then you're probably gonna to want to invest in some dedicated carp fishing rods. The reason carp rods exist is because you're sometimes casting very big weights, like a three or four ounce lead is very difficult to cast on one of these feeder or float rods. Also, carp are very, very strong creatures. So a rod like this with a thick, strong blank, big, strong eyes, and a three and a half pound test curve becomes quite important when you've got a big carp on the end that's trying to swim into weed or snags. Probably you could get away fishing for most core species with just one feeder rod or even just one float rod. However, as soon as you start targeting carp over the sort of 10, 15 pound bracket, uh, they're gonna pull back in a whole different way like they're going to fight so strong and you're going to need strong line on your reel too so a dedicated carp rod becomes really quite important historically everyone used to fish for carp with 12 foot rods the belief was is that you needed a long rod because you needed to cast far and the people who caught the most were the ones who could put their rig right out in the middle of the lake but over the years i've definitely learned that a little 10 foot carp fishing rod is so handy i can leave it in the back of my van or my car it casts really accurately at shorter ranges and it's just a joy to play fish on especially if i'm fishing you know in quite tight swims where you haven't got much space above because of trees or there's lots of brambles or reeds around so a 10 foot carp rod is probably what i would advise to someone just getting into fishing for carp and if they're fishing relatively small 
to medium sized lakes and rivers. The time when a 12 foot cart rod is gonna come into play is when you need to cast much further to reach the fish. This is a 12 foot long four pound test curve Kaizen Green. This is a dedicated rod for casting longer distances and potentially catching bigger carp as well. The thing with long range casting is your rod needs to be incredibly strong, light and also responsive. So when you thump that lead out, it needs to spring straight really fast to project that lead into the horizon. This rod is what I've used for probably the last eight, nine months and it's done the job perfectly for me. Combining a long 12 foot, three and a half or four pound test curve cart rod with a big pit reel is the best way to achieve long distance casts. There's no point getting a, a strong 12 foot rod and then putting a very small little reel on it without the line capacity as you will be very restricted with your casting. Involved within your carp fishing, you'll also find the need potentially to spod bait out using a device like this, a spawn. When you're doing this, it's a little bit tricky to cast a very big, heavy, loaded spawn with a normal cart rod. So this is why spod and marker rods are available. This is basically a thicker, stronger, stiffer version of the cart rod I showed you just now, which is designed specifically for attaching a spawn or marker float and giving you the strength and confidence needed to thump that out and bait accurately around your rig. When it comes to surface fishing for carp, you can of course use the rods that I just showed you, the 12 foot varieties. However, when you're using quite small hooks, I definitely find it beneficial to use a rod that's a little bit softer. So in the past, I've float to fished with like a two and a half pound test curve rod, or even a 1.75 test curve rod when I'm free lining for carp quite close in. Now for those people who love lure fishing, I'm sorry to save you till last, but if you're getting into your lure fishing, there's a couple of options for you. I'll try and reach my lure rods. What we've got here is two slightly different styles of spinning rod. First up is a standard light spinning rod. This is a rod that's very light in the hand. It's probably six and a half, seven foot long very responsive tip and I mean there's not really much more to say about it other than the butt like the handle is very short which makes casting and passing the rod around you and working the lure nice and comfortable the alternative to that is a drop shot rod this is a softer much lighter rod which has a incredibly sensitive tip it would be more sensitive but I snapped the end off last week which I always seem to do with drop shot rods. The reason a drop shot rod has that very sensitive soft tip is because you're often working very small lures incredibly slowly across the bottom and you want to be able to spot the little tap tap when a small perch, pike or zander takes the lure. Drop shot rods are a lovely bit of kit and I can actually use a drop shot style rod for fishing in many other different ways too. Like if I'm pinching on a split shot and just letting a worm bounce around in the river, this is often the rod that I reach for. And then I can also throw small feeders around with this too. It's obviously not a long range setup. You can't cast further than about 30 yards, but for any of the sort of small streams and rivers around my house roving, this setup is really nice. There is of course another type of lure rod, which is this very pokey, beefy setup. This is designed for casting very large lures. This has a casting weight, I think of, what was it? 40 to 140 grams. So that's basically for huge lures. You can cast something as big as that on a stiff lure rod like this. You'll also notice that the reel is mounted on the top. This is a multiplier style reel, which is often combined with a very stiff rod when you're casting big lures for pike potentially. These will be slightly longer. I think this is eight and a half foot long. So a longer, stiffer rod than what I've showed you the previous lure rods, which are maybe more for like perch and small pike. Now I totally understand that I've just shown you a whole load of different rods that realistically, most people aren't able to go out and buy one of each. I get that. Like when I started fishing, I was using, I think it's this one or a rod very similar to it. 
uh, about eight feet long, designed for small pike, bass, perch. It's a lure rod, but I used to do everything with it. I used to try and catch carp, I'd get barbel, I'd go on the canal and half the time when I hooked little roach and perch, I'd lose them because the rod was too stiff. But I learned the hard way that whilst one rod can do everything, it can't necessarily do it well. And if you haven't got the money to invest in a dedicated float rod or dedicated feeder rod or dedicated carp gear, then looking for a lure rod of around about eight, eight and a half feet long, a medium action one designed for small pike, perch, bass, it could really help you because that one rod, you can take that to a lot of different places and catch a lot of different fish with it. I do hope though, that you guys watching this video will one day find yourselves surrounded by all of the different rods and stuff that you love using for all the different types of fishing you do. But in the meantime, thanks for watching the video and good luck with your fishing.